take a look at who Robert Redford is married to. Since the 1960s, Robert Redford has been one of the most famous and well-liked people in the world. Redford is very well-liked, but it's not just because he's so good at acting on TV. It really comes down to the little things he does in his free time. It's safe to say that Robert Redford's life story is full of excitement. He overcame health problems and stressful events in his youth, dealt with the pros and cons of his beauty, started one of the biggest independent film festivals in the United States, and had relationships outside of acting. And now he's finally telling the biggest secrets about his life and work. Keep watching to learn more about the life of Robert Redford, one of America's most beloved stars. Charles Robert Redford Jr. Charles Robert Redford Jr. was born to Martha Hart and Charles Robert Redford on August 18, 1936. They were very happy to have a beautiful baby boy. They had no idea that their beloved baby boy would grow up to be one of the most popular and handsome male stars in America today. Behind all of Robert's hard-earned successes were, however, a lot of personal problems and responsibilities that he had to overcome. After all, a super famous person wouldn't be a super famous person without an interesting and inspiring past, right? Redford's Role Models Redford loved Martha, a stay-at-home mom who was wonderful and kind. But Redford and his father had a much more complex connection. They didn't always agree with each other, but that didn't mean Redford didn't have male role models or people he could relate to. Even though he had problems with his own father, Redford got along well with his grandfather, Uncle David, and Grandpa on his mother's side of the family. Each member of Redford's family had something different to teach him, like how to survive in the wild, how to play sports, or how to love nature. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Not getting along with your parents isn't always easy, but Redford was lucky to have a very special and close bond with his mother. She had a lot of life, happiness, and love in her. She had gone out. I mean, she took risks and was very dangerous. And when I was 10, she taught me how to drive a car, but no one knew about it. I mean, things like that. So we were close, Redford told NPR's Fresh Air in 2018 during an interview. And since Redford is now so likable and so full of life, it's safe to say that the apple didn't fall far from the tree. But Redford didn't just get life, fun, and love from his mother. Redford the Rebel Redford is clearly a well-rounded person, but when he was in school, he didn't care about schoolwork at all. So what did Redford do in college if he wasn't interested in schoolwork? He went to university. The host of NPR's The Fresh Air, Terry Gross, asked Redford, From what I've heard, studies weren't really your thing, and you spend a lot of time drinking and riding motorbikes or competing in drag races. Redford answered, Yes, yeah, the whole thing. Behind all of this mischief, though, he had a good reason to act this way. Another disheartening loss. Not only did he lose his uncle David, but other family members had died around the same time. At the age of 40, Redford's much-loved mother died from a rare blood disease. He was only 18 years old at the time. There's no doubt that losing two important family members while you're a teenager can be very hard and sad. And the fact that Redford's family didn't talk about anything and just moved on turned out to be both good and bad. Cupid's Arrow His college habits were clearly not well-behaved, which is why he left the University of Colorado in the end. But before he could start to change his life, Cupid's Arrow chose to bring them together. At a young age, Redford fell in love with a classmate named Lola Van Wagenen. The two college students fell in love and were ready to spend the rest of their lives together. But before that could happen, Redford had to take care of his own life. Exchanging Vows in Sin City Redford went to Paris, France and Florence, Italy to study art for a while. When he came back to the United States, he had some new goals to reach. One of them was to put a ring on Miss Lola Van Wagenen's finger. Yes, they did. Even though Redford was away for a long time, their love stayed strong and healthy. Robert got down on one knee and asked Lola to marry him. She said yes and chose to stop going to school. And when they were 21, the two young lovers got married in secret in Las Vegas, Nevada. Focusing on the family Redford's life had a lot of good things happen to it, and he was able to reach many of his goals and dreams. However, he still had to fight to deal with and get through all the bad things that happened. The Redford family had a lot of ups and downs in the 1960s. 
Radford worked hard to make a career path for himself that was challenging and rewarding, but he also cared about his family. Together, Robert and Lola gave birth to four lovely children. But when their first child was born in 1959, they went through a terrible tragedy that no one could have predicted. Another hard loss. In September 1959, the happy couple gave birth to their first child. But after two and a half months, their son was diagnosed with sudden infant death syndrome. People didn't know much about Redford's firstborn son, Scott Anthony Redford, but it's clear that it was hard on the family. As we already said, Redford grew up in a home that didn't talk much about death or losses, so it makes sense that he's worked hard over the years to keep his private life as private as possible. In fact, Redford told CBS Sunday Morning, at a certain point, being famous took more away than it gave. You spend less and less time doing what you like best, which is work. Family Matters Redford and Lola Van Wagenen didn't let the death of their child stop them from having three more kids. In 1960, their daughter, Shauna, was born. She grew up to be a painter. In 1962, after being married for two years, they had a son named James. James is a writer and director. In 1970, Robert and Lola gave birth to their daughter, Amy. Just like her father, Amy went on to be an actor. She appeared on Sex and the City, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, and The Sopranos as a guest star. She also directs and puts together movies. In later years, the family kept growing and now Redford has seven grandchildren. Hitting a new level of fame. Over the next 10 years, Redford moved into a whole new world of adventure. He started a family and had three wonderful children. He also had lots of new job possibilities. His good looks and charms as an all-American next door friend were getting him around the business and opening all kinds of new doors for him. In 1969, when he got one of the main parts in the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and worked with his good friend Paul Newman, his fame went to the next level and changed for good. Buying a lot of land in Utah In 1985, Redford and Lola broke up, which was sad, but before that the two of them had bought some land in Utah, which is full of mountains and wild places. In 1969, when he first became successful, when they bought some ski land, they put only $500 into it. But as Redford's popularity grew, so did the size of their property. In the end, he used the land to make a new movie-related dream come true. Redford used the lot to build the Sundance Institute and start the famous Sundance Film Festival for independent directors. What a crazy thing! Celeb Crushes Even though they've only worked on four movie togethers, it turns out they're very close. In fact, it seems like they quietly liked each other as famous people. There was just a chemistry between us as people that we were able to bring to the screen without trying. It's always been like that in all of our movies, Redford told The Telegraph in 2017. So how did Fonda feel about it? Fonda said, I was always in love with Robert Redford. We worked together on three movies, but nothing happened because we were both married. In Love Again even though Redford and Fonda are good friends, another woman won his heart. In 1996, Redford met Sybil Zagers, a painter who was born in Germany. In 2008, he told them they were getting married, and in 2009, they had a beautiful wedding. In 2011, Redford told People Magazine that his wife is what keeps him young. My wife is a very special person. She's younger than me and European, which I like, so that's a whole new life, he said. I ride horses, ski, and play pretty hard tennis. I still have energy. When that stops working, I might start to think about getting old. Why not live as much as you can? One of the last movies Redford was in was Our Souls at Night. Redford said that he wants to stop playing in 2018, but he knows that the movie business will always be near and dear to his heart. Retirement means ending or giving up something to me, so I don't really think about it. I mean, you have to live your life. Why not make the most of it as long as you can? We don't know what Robert Redford has planned for the rest of his life, but we're sure it'll be full of artistic and natural adventures that'll take your breath away.